thank you. Um, today I dress like this because the whole day long we had a TCK, um, TCK Bible camp. So I didn't change my clothes and it was really meaningful. And the whole day I had to spend time with the kids and sometimes the kids didn't follow well and sometimes they don't want to you know, focus. But it was really fine because uh, in the middle, I was almost discouraged because I could see that some kids didn't focus really well and they were kind of distracted. And then I thought to myself, it is me who has to be strengthened first. So I just concentrated on the, the breathing and the meditation on the word. And I decided that I should gain strength first. And then from some time on, I didn't know whether the kids are following the program well or not, because I was following it. And later I could see that everyone was, you know, um, into the meditation altogether. And it was really an answer to me. So in the introduction, I want to tell you that it can happen. Things happen. Things can happen to everyone. That is really powerful confession actually especially before the lord if we can confess it that is really large because the confession this kind of confession can be made only when you have the power to overcome it when your thought when our thoughts are not gospelized then we cannot give this confession that things can happen i can make a mistake and I can also be weak, you know, people can be weak sometimes and even the evangelists when they lose hold of something then they can be weak too. So in that case, instead of saying that, oh, things can happen, instead of that, we say that, how can you do that? How dare you say that? That's what we say. It's very much important to admit that this thing can happen to me as well as others. This can happen to that person as well as me. So that is really necessary. Only then, when others make a mistake to me, I can wait by saying, that, yes, things can happen. So that is a kind of thing that we say, leisure. That is the power and the leisure in our heart. Actually, while we are living on earth, the mistake itself is not really important. You know, There are no people who want to choose the problem there is no one who wants to choose the difficulty and no one wants to make a mistake intentionally so um, instead uh, rather than saying things can happen it's more accurate to say that we have no choice it is more accurate expression we were born as the sinners and we left God and we make a mistake that brings us farther from the Lord. And that is a natural thing. So it doesn't mean that we can stay there forever. Just because it's natural that we make a mistake doesn't mean that it's okay to linger in the mistake. So in the introduction, what you have to remember is gospelize gospelize my thought and gospelize myself number one is I um, there are some parts that I don't like about myself sometimes I make mistake because I'm a lacking person and sometimes we just leave um, haphazardly because we are weak and we are tired and we are discouraged and we have to know that just because we work harder or just because we do the better job doesn't mean that God is glorified by that. God is pleased when I look toward him. God is pleased when we, um, we stay with him. We are um, we're staying in the place where we can enjoy God's word. That pleases the Lord first. God doesn't want us to look at ourselves and crumble by that because he already knew my weaknesses he already knew that i am lacking um, people's love is really different um, when people are getting married they don't get married uh, despite all the weaknesses they get married because they couldn't see the weaknesses 
they couldn't see the deficiency of that person. They couldn't see the shortage of 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 the things. They couldn't see that. And once they get married, you know, that small fault or a small mistake or small weaknesses are maximized because that is revealed. That's why after getting married, they said, "I was deceived before I got married." No, we were not deceived. We knew that, but it looked really small because our eyes were covered by something. So sometimes there are people who say that, okay, before I go to church, I should be a better person. I should quit my bad behavior. I should settle my life first. My situation is really unstable, so I have to make this settled first, and then I will come to church. That day will never come because we are not perfect. If you want to rely on your own plan or rely on yourself. Then you have to give it a second thought because we're not that perfect. Number two is the reality. I am talking、uh, now. I am talking about the things that we are looking at and then we stumble by. So the first thing was when we look at ourselves, and the second thing that makes us crumble. Is the reality, the current reality, or the visible things in our reality? Satan wants to shake our reality. Reality is something that you can see right now in front of you. That is happening right now. That is our reality. We are in our flesh. That's why it's really easy for us to see the reality and being shaken by that.、Um, When you wrestle with your reality, then that will really exhaust you. You cannot stop the reality, and you cannot soothe the reality. Reality is just reality. And then this is when we have to admit that things can happen in life. Life happens. It's different from what non-believers say. It's not being skeptical or it's not being positive. We have to admit that these things really happen. Then what do we hold to in that reality? When you hold onto the reality, then that current reality can change, or sometimes the reality can shake. Then we have to be shaken, and we have to be changed altogether with it. So instead of that, we're gonna hold onto what is unshaking. We're gonna hold to what is absolutely firm. What is the most secure and safe? That is only the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that we can say perfect and enough. Perfect and enough. They are the adjectives that perfectly fits in the gospel. So it can be used only to the Christ.、Um, this is not about going well or not going well in the situation. Just because your situation is getting better doesn't mean that it's gonna getting get better forever. And just because we're in a worse situation doesn't mean that we're gonna be in there forever. Things don't last forever. So when we um when we hold on to the conclusion of only gospel, then the conclusion is the gospel. That's why we're not shaken by the visible things. So that's the safest way, and that's the most secure way. Unique word, the word of uniqueness. We all know that concerns or worries and fear, they eat us away. They are eating us away really quietly, and we know that, but we walk into that road. Sometimes we just, you know, by ourselves, we just walk into the worries because we think we have to do that. Because that is a kind of well systemized thing in ourselves. So why do we have to go back into the slavery of worries and fears and some concerns all again? Because nothing can turn me away from it. Nothing is powerful enough to turn me away but the Word of God, the uniqueness. That is the word that has the only、uh, uh, the, uh, the word has the unique power to turn me away from my old way of system of worrying and fear. You know, 
then you might ask me, then what should I do when I have this problem right in front of me? This problem is right there in front of me, then without worrying, then what do I have to do? I'm not saying that we have to just watch it over there, you know, the worries there and we pretend not to see that. We're not doing it. It is worthy of worrying, but we will leave it there and hold on to the blood covenant with the confession of, yeah, things can happen and we hold on to the covenant of the blood. We have to remember that blood was the key to the freedom. When following the blood covenant, we will see that God resolves it. At least once we have to experience that and wilderness was that kind of time schedule. They held to the blood covenant. Even if they were still in the disbelief, they just followed it because they had to. Sometimes God showed us into the situation where we have no choice but to hold to the blood covenant. Sometimes God, you know, removes all the things that we rely on and then tells us to stand up in the covenant again. So that is what God wants. And that was the time of the wilderness. Number three is the prayer of recreation. Every, every worship time, we listen to the three things over and over again. But we have to know that um, these things are not the same. When this week you hear that and you need to be able to apply it in our daily lives. Next week when you hear that again, then it has to feel different. Because your last week and your this week will be really different. According to your life, according to your occupation and age, these things can, uh, can sound really different. The prayer of recreation is like this. In the sandy ground, they could reap reap the barley, the, they harvested, and they stored it in the storehouse. And that is the work of recreation. Who can do that? Who can reap something from the sandy ground? They carried the Ark of the Covenant, and they went into the battlefield, and they just won. That is the work of recreation. Out of nothing, they had to build a tabernacle, and they lived centered on the tabernacle. And that is also the work of recreation. There's no one who could live in the wilderness for that long, you know, harvesting and making the building. So I'm not saying that the recreation is something like we make something impossible. It's like we ask for something impossible and God fulfills it. That's not the work of recreation. The recreation is we're not following the reality. We're not following our method in the reality. That is the recreation. Um... When we follow the reality, then think about it. How can we worship now? You know, we have no time to do that. I have no time to pray. And I have no time to come all the way to the church to worship. When you see the reality, then the first thing that we will remove from our schedule will be the worship. Non-believers will say that, oh, you have to move your body quickly then why do you just stay there and stupidly worshiping God? And why do you just stay there and employ the method of prayer? Because prayer seems like you are doing nothing. But when you pray, that is when the spiritual world is most active. So that's when you do all the work. That is the work of recreation. Um, here's one thing that I want to tell you. The enthusiasm without God can't de defeat the laziness with God. So when you just uh, sit there and then pray, it seems like you're lazy, but it's better than moving quickly without the Lord. So nobody can defeat the person who prays. So we have to um, earnestly you know, experience this first. When you experience that the worship becomes my answer and my way, then God really uses that person to his heart's content. To his heart's content. Until God feels that he's really satisfied, he will use you. When? Only when we feel that the worship is my answer and my way. Number three is anyone. 
It is rightful that without God, without the gospel, we just follow our nature and our spirit and our old root. And even if they listen to the gospel, even if they accept Jesus Christ, they still there are still people out there who live the way they want. So just because you accept the gospel doesn't mean that you can just live perfectly according to the gospel. Because we have our old imprint and old nature and old spirit. I have the things that I learned from the world. And the problem is people don't feel that I have to get rid of it. I have to change it. They just think that, oh, I have learned this way so I can live like this. That's the, uh, the difference. There are Sunday Christians and they say that Jesus is the one who is in charge of my afterlife. After death, he brings me to heaven. But in this world, my life is mine. So that is a Sunday Christian. They were also saved, but on earth, they cannot enjoy the heavenly blessing. Anyone can do that, but those people, we're not going to blame, but we will just wait because things can happen to anyone. So we will wait for them. But the most important thing that I want to tell you is my today. Today, I listen to the word and today I plan my future and I design my future and the past is interpreted again and my future is designed differently. That is called transcending time and space. When you listen to the word today and when, when you realize that, oh, this is my covenant and God is telling me this, then transcending time and space, my past, which I cannot trace back, I cannot time travel, but my past is reinterpreted. It was my scar, but now I can see that this is my blessing. It was really the horrible memory that I don't want to be reminded of, but that was God's plan and God wants to use it. So that's how it is reinterpreted. Then how about my future? It will be redesigned because we plan our today again in the word of God. We plan our today in the gospel. That's when we, are, we say that my past, my present, I'm my, and my future are connected to the throne. Connected to the throne. That is really important. So in order to experience it, in order to become the, the witness of this work, our church has prepared many things. And first of all, that is the intensive school that we have in the lunchtime. And that's where we can challenge again toward a prayer and evangelism. And through this contact-free service, we are all praying that the disciples who will reach 237 nations can arise. And we begin our church-wide retreat from Monday. And through that, uh, the concentration period, we will concentrate on God, how I will design my own only unique uniqueness and recreation system. There should be something that is my own where I can focus on God in, one ju in just one second. So for example, it is kind of easy for the artist because some pianist or some violinist, they can just grab their instrument and play the Lord, play the song for the Lord and they are feeling that they're inspired by it and they receive the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So we need to have that kind of method where I can concentrate on the Lord in just one second. So that is my only uniqueness and recreation system. And that will be preached during our church-wide retreat. And for the sake of that, we have prepared the best interpreter ever. So you will never miss that chance. Yeah. Um, when, you can, uh, when you are able to discover your covenant, our past is re-illuminated, which I cannot change, and it is edited again. So the conclusion is, concentration. When we talk about concentration, then people have the 
tough image, like um, forcing myself to to close my eyes and then not move like for a long time, even if I want to budge my body, but I cannot. So that's not that kind of concentration. Concentra concentration is the power to break free from my toughness, to break free from my difficulties, to break free from my weaknesses and my deficiency. I am freed from me who is really lacking and enter into the eternal power of the throne. That is the power of concentration. So tomorrow, we're going to concentrate on one hour of the worship, but it's not just a long time, it's just one hour, but that one hour, when you are perfectly, not perfectly, when you are, um, when you gather your whole heart to concentrate on it, then that little one hour can turn over our life because worship is that powerful. Lastly, I want to tell you that today if we sang the hymnal song, The Trusting Heart to Jesus Clings, and I want to read the fourth lyric, the fourth verse again. When to the throne of grace I flee, I find a promise true. The mighty arms upholding me will bear my burdens too. We flee to the throne of grace, and that's when we find a promise true. Um, no matter how many times I tell you to believe in the promise, believe in the covenant, doesn't mean that you can find it believable. But when you flee to the throne of grace, then that's when God makes you to find the promise true, to find the covenant true. So the if there is only one place that we have to run toward when we are in the difficulty or, you know, when we are even not in the difficulty, that is the throne of God. So the time when your time is connected to the throne of God, that is only the worship time. So tomorrow, the worshiping time is really important. Today, we're prepared in this service again as the worshiper. And tomorrow, with that one service or two services, we will stake our life on the gospel so that gospel that is powerful and more than enough and perfect can turn over my life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving us the gospel that is perfect and more than enough and is everything. And thank you for calling us into the blessing of gospelization. Let us not be shaken by myself or by the reality or by people around us, but admit it and concentrate on the Lord and receive the answer from the throne directly. Tomorrow we go to church as a worshiper and we also attend a retreat. Please edit and plan the design our life newly again. And we believe in uh, we believe that you will give us the filling of the Holy Spirit every moment. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.